Hi there, and thanks for joining me. Now you might think that the thumbnail that I made for this video is a bit of clickbait, and it's true, it is. However, it is truer than you might imagine. I'd like to bring you on a quick journey to explain how I got to the point of taking a picture of this wonderful galaxy. I began by taking another picture, a wide field image of this piece of sky. It interested me because in this direction towards the constellation of Camelopardalis, there are many, many clouds of gas and dust that are in our own galaxy. Later, of course, I saw that there was this other galaxy well beyond the one that is of interest. But first, for this field, I took a picture of it, and as you can see here, there is a very distracting gradient. It's not only distracting, it makes processing a challenge. The first step is to remove the stars and then get rid of this bulk gradient. The reason that I have this gradient, and it is terrible, is because the flat field panel that I used to generate my flat fields was not aligned with the telescope. So I need to get rid of it here in the image, and I do so first, and then I'm going to put the stars back in place so that I can make an yet another measurement to do a color correction of the frame. I need the stars in order to properly do this color calibration. So now I'm going to step forward and you can see that I have made a color correction here. However, this looks bizarre. I need to reset the screen display so that you can see the actual colors of this frame. These are the true colors. We have the right colors for the stars and the background. Of course, it's very difficult to see that gas and dust in the background without removing the stars. And so that is, of course, the next step that I'm going to do. Remove these stars and then work on the nebulosity. At this point, I performed no other kind of operations on this frame. No noise reduction or anything else. This is what the background sky looks like in this direction. And there are these unknown bits of nebulosity, as well as, of course, the galaxy of interest that we're going to be taking a closer look at in just a moment. Going forward, I permanently stretch the image and then do the typical kind of operations that you would to increase the color saturation and also increase the contrast of the image, making it easier to see many of the details found within. Now I'll add the stars back in. You can begin to see how this image is finally taking form. Adding more brightness and vibrance to the color shows everything that I have recorded in my data. It shows you all aspects of these clouds. But what's most interesting, of course, is this galaxy. At least it really stood out to me. Because as I looked at the outskirts of the galaxy, it was clear to me that this galaxy must be of the type that's irregular and probably has a lot of star formation occurring within it. You can see it is ringed in red. These red bits were the first indication to me that this galaxy seemed to have something special going on. I took this wide field image with a relatively small telescope, so it's difficult to see details in the galaxy, but I thought that there was enough there that it warranted more attention. This is a grayscale image of the same data, just with the red filtered light. You can just barely start to make out surrounding the galaxy, it looks like it has the hints of filamentary structure. That means that this galaxy has some kind of outflow coming from it, and that's pretty cool. These kinds of galaxies are called starburst galaxies, and perhaps the most famous of the type is M82. This galaxy has a tremendous amount of star formation and star death taking place within it and it therefore expels through stellar winds and explosions these wonderful red streams of hydrogen gas and they glow in this uh, this characteristic color of pink red m82 is approximately 11 million light years away and that is a similar distance as it is to the galaxy that we're interested in which is ngc 1569. however 1569 is only one-third the size of this galaxy M82, and yet its outflows are equally large, which makes it all that much more spectacular. Shown here is one of the very few full-color images I was able to find 
on the internet, and yet this image still doesn't tell the full story of this galaxy, and that is what interested me the most. Here is a Hubble Space Telescope image of NGC 1569, and though it is not a full-color image, you can certainly see the exquisite detail that the telescope is able to achieve. In particular, if you look at in the heart of the galaxy, you'll see that there are these massive star clusters. These are the clusters that are driving the outflows that we see emanating from the galaxy. Not only do these clusters have very strong stellar winds, they're also comprised of very massive stars that live short lives on galactic timescales and blow up dramatically as supernova explosions. This is literally an exploding galaxy. However, this HST image doesn't give us the complete picture of the full story. We'll need to turn our attention to the images that I was fortunate enough to work with to show you the full spectacle of these stellar cataclysms. Shown here for the first time is a very deep image of NGC 1569. This is captured in the red wavelengths of light. This is the hydrogen alpha emission. This is where these streams of gas are brightest and easiest to see. They have been released by the stellar winds and possibly supernova explosions taking place within this starburst galaxy. The stars have been removed to make it easier to see all of the interesting filaments of gas. Let's now retrace our steps and begin with the wide field image, zooming into the galaxy to reveal a full color image that has this hydrogen alpha emission incorporated to give us the complete picture of NGC 1569. It's a bit of a mess, but that's to be expected for an exploding galaxy. This is a full color image. We can see the difference in color between those clusters of stars, though they're not resolved in this image. We can see the bluish light that they are emitting in the heart of this irregular starburst galaxy. Then we can see the rest of the disk for what it is. And then finally, of course, with the addition of the hydrogen alpha enhancement, these wonderful red structures and filaments outflows coming from the galaxy. In addition, as you recall from the wide field image, there are these clouds of dust and gas that are in the foreground. They don't show up strongly in this image, but they are here throughout the frame. Those are right in front of our face and kind of make it yet a further messy image. Finally, of course, there are background galaxies that are unrelated. This is only, as I mentioned, 10 million light years away. It's somewhat fortunate that it is close to us. Had it been a galaxy further away, these red wavelengths of light that I took advantage of for that particular filter would be red shifted out of the filter's bandwidth and therefore be much more difficult to see. I hope that you enjoyed this deep dive in checking out a galaxy NGC 1569 it is perhaps the first time it's been seen this deeply ever before.